hello I'm Teresa back again I've just come in from the local market and it's a really wet and windy Wednesday afternoon I've had to put the heating on again it's very dark out there already and it's only quarter past four but I have been go trawling around the charity shops and I have found this not a great deal to do with what we're doing at the moment but I thought I would just show you it's a popular gardening diary and for all the journalers I look at this I mean it's fabulous it's a beautiful that fabric cover there but it is actually someone's diary from 1982 now I bought this it was only a couple of pounds no, the price is oh it was a pound yes it was a pound um and it's lots of advice about um pruning and gardening and grass and everything but it is actually a handwritten diary and it's i haven't read all the entries yet um it starts on the sunday the 3rd of january 1982 and it's about whoever is cutting back her, um, can't absolutely read that, a Japanese garden and removed all the rotted something and removed the small pieces of trellis, etc. And it goes on and it's quite detailed. It looks as if it's quite detailed. Lots and lots of notes here in, um, for some reason I have this feeling it's a lady perhaps it's because I like gardening well I would do if I had one I'm actually in a flat but it stops almost to the day it stops on the 3rd of June 1982 which 3rd of June is a couple of days away so um, it seemed like a good idea at the time but I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it now why has it suddenly stopped but anyway so um that's quite a great find i think and the other one and i i collect vintage tablecloths and i have found this beast of a tablecloth it's absolutely beautiful and this was two pounds fifty which i think translate to almost the same in dollars and cents american dollars and cents I'm not sure about other currencies but look at this absolutely fabulous cross stitch um drawn thread that looks like crochet but i don't think it is and i haven't actually opened it up yet i haven't had time but i'm quite excited about doing that and there's the price £2.50 so that was a wonderful find as well find I should say not a fine well we're back now I think it's to part two no or is it three but these were the two examples of the journal covers we didn't look inside yesterday so this is the first one this I think is my favorite lace backing fabric more lace and these are pockets with a rough a frill or ruffle along there slow stitched in once again with her, her oh herringbone seems as if i was drinking while i was down the market but i wasn't honestly so this hasn't been divided yet for obvious reasons because that will be divided when the signatures are placed in there then these will naturally become two pockets so that's the first one from that folder this one from the second cover is more in your face now you I don't think you can see very well this beautiful fabric here it's actually gold and it's got um, a gold um pattern running through it no you it's not picking the camera's not picking that up too well and it's raised it's embossed and this is lace i just love this beautiful beautiful lace it's so deep it's actually in inches um six and a half inches at its longest 
so that is quite stunning once again it hasn't been divided yet the signatures will do that too now this afternoon I thought what we would do is look at the cover so far the one that we started was it only yesterday <laughs> it feels longer than that the one that we started yesterday and we would think about or start um, putting the insides in now in the the, the um, example in the introduction I showed you the cover with hessian embroidery in it now because this is going to be a smaller journal I've decided to save the hessian journal the the cover and make this one more like the two that I've just shown you but I will be showing you how to do that hessian slow stitch uh, sorry the binker it was binker sorry I will be showing you how to do the slow stitch on the binker but I think for this this journal it's so small that um, the binker would just be too much and maybe pad it out too much so having said that this is how far I've got now there is a right now right now that will be the front and that will be the back let me turn that round so you can see it that way now, there's a piece of stray lace on the table here it wants to join us right I'll take this back so look away while I do this that's it never sure if all this movement makes you giddy or not so this is how far I got yesterday after I turned the camera off now it's basically finished as you can see all the pieces have now been secured to the background with running stitch it was a really fun thing to do it it did take several hours now I secured the pieces down this piece that piece and these and that this and that are appliqued they're secured on top of the patch and they're they've sewn in at the same time as the patch was sewn so the fabric was placed down and then another fabric was placed on top now I didn't use any net on this because I decided that orange net that I showed you was far too thick it wasn't the regular net but I found this a little while ago this is ideal and it's actually one of those bath uh, scrubbing things that you use on your skin like an exfoliator now had I found this yesterday I would have used that on top just to add not not to totally cover it but to sew down just to give it a little bit more depth but I'll save that for the next one I think it would have made quite a difference on yes look can you see the difference here that it would have made it would have made on this this has got a very delicate pattern on it which you I don't think you'll be able to see but it is there now can you see the difference this would have made it would have just added a little bit of depth a little bit of color um, and it would have taken what looks to be stark um, away but I have actually used a pale green thread on there which isn't being shown so that is as far as I got with this but being um sorry the Ada pieces that I put in this is one of them that there and what I did was just a few cross stitches as you can see didn't take long I put the Ada down secured it and then I did the cross stitches I did running stitches on that piece and on the yellow piece which was if you remember uh, dyed with natural yellow food coloring so I did yellow stitches there and where I'm sitting I can actually see the stitches and on the pink piece that was appliqued um, they're quite prominent not so prominent on the screen unfortunately so this is how far I got last night now what I want to do today in this session I have a few bits here that I'm going to um, choose a few 
just to jazz it up a little bit just to make it look a bit more interesting so close your eyes again i'm moving the camera <laughs> right now i think i know what i'm going to do at this stage um i initially took these out and i placed them around and i just couldn't i just couldn't get them to to gel or I just couldn't get them to blend into the background they're just stark white um, they're very very pretty but not for this so no 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 get rid of those this is from a piece of net fabric that somebody donated I have a lot of fabrics that um, somebody gave me donated this I've cut out now it actually looks better up there on the screen that's strange isn't it than it does here and oh, i'm really upsetting the camera with the focus i'm sorry oh well i'm not so sure about that i'm going to put that on one side now i ran through some buttons these are wooden buttons and i ran through some more that i have in here different shapes and colors and makes and goodness knows textures these were pretty but i'm not sure if they actually do anything for the piece for the slow stitch so i decided no no on that this i love using and i would use it on everything as you can see it's very blingy I can't quite pick out the areas I wouldn't use it it's three rows I expect you've all seen this before it's actually three rows they're not sequins they're if you imagine a dustbin lid if you have galvanized dustbins or if you this they're this shape you see this they're that shape so they're not actually sequins and they're all sewn together they're all glued together on a mesh background but that is the shape they are only teeny teeny tiny well that was convenient having that there so what i would do to use it i would actually cut it into a row so i've just got a row of one but i'm not even sure if i want to put these on this one i did put them on there as you can see you see them here and some red ones here as well um, and I just inclined to think now that and here oh gosh look yeah got a bit carried away on that one really didn't I yeah I've just decided perhaps it's time that I just put that away for a while for this one anyway so what I ended up with was actually these and they're very very lovely once again they're on lace now these are sequins i'm going to hold them up rather than move the camera they're on lace now i'm not sure if this is a curtain fabric absolutely beautiful it really is i haven't seen anything like it and that was donated so i'm going to use that one here i've placed pins and i think i'm going to put that one there or round about that area and I'm going to put these I have two of these um, I'm going to put this one here and a smaller one with three leaves I'm going to put this one and the pins dropped out but I think it was round about there so we have a little bit of what looks to be growth going on how does that look on the camera Mm. sometimes you get a better idea of what your design looks like when you see it on the screen than when it's actually in front mm, that, look, that actually looks better in front of me than it does on the screen now isn't that strange now what you have to remember when you're doing one of these covers that are is just to be folded and there isn't going to be a spine in it so to speak try to avoid the center with anything like this anything 3d that you're sewing down because if you put that in the center like this you know what's going to happen 
it's going to be really hard, messy, to sew it down and to put your signature through it. So we need to avoid the center, which is, just give it a quick fold. I'm going to put a pin in there. Right, there's the pin. So this, these need to avoid the pin. Well, that will because it's over there. And then we have, I think I said I'd put that one curving round there. I like that, that way because it's a nice, oh, look, what did I say? If I put that there, look at that. It's right way, it's right across the half. Oh my goodness. Do as I say and not as I do, I think. <laughs> I think my nan used to say that. <laughs> right, but she meant it. Right, <laughs> bless her. <laughs> so, I think, yeah, we will put those there. Now, I'm going to remember that. So now I've chosen, I've chosen these three. So I'm just going to sit them over here for a while. But those will be sewn on. Now I want to show you something else, um, another stitch I used on here which you might like to use and it was to just n narrow some of the areas, some of the lines and I think I've only used it on here twice because then I realised I was going to use embellishments on here but you can see this here and there that is feather stitch and it's a beautiful stitch and all I've done with that because some of the spacing on these running stitches was wide I thought I know I'm going to just fill that up with some feather stitch I might even do some along here uh, maybe some along there now feather stitch is very very easy to do and it actually goes that way but I think when you're creative and you're on the arty side, you tend to break the rules anyway. So if somebody says, well, it's supposed to go that way, then you think, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, I might not like it that way. Oh, I might like it that way, which I do actually. I like the hanging, the way it looks as if it's hanging. So for those of you who aren't too sure about feather stitch, I'm just going to run through it for you here. It won't take a minute. Now, let's put that there. Now, so you can see this, I'm using a darning needle. Right, I'm going to make it big again, people. There you go, folks. I'm going to use a darning needle with a great big eye. Right, let me move that down. If you can see that, how big that is, it's longer than my thumb and I know my hands look huge up there but they're not that huge yeah you see it's about the length of my my thumb so it's quite a size and it has a lovely big hole there lovely big eye you see that lovely eye that eye must be whoa it's just under an inch actually so I have some wool here as well. Now, if you were to do this, you'd want a nice cruel needle. That's C-R-E-W-E-L, I believe. And two strands of thread to do it on, your, to do it like this. Oops, to do it like this. And to start it, what you do, now knot it. Nobody is going to see the back of your piece of work so knot it i've used knots i've not worried about the back of mine at all because it's going to it will be tidied up but nobody's going to see it so i have knotted i feel happy knotting because then i know that it isn't going to undo so i have put a knot in this which has just come undone so i'll do that again and then I'm going to take the needle through, through, let me do it this way, through to the back, like this. Hold it down with your thumb here and a little way along, depending on how wide you want the stitch, you take it back. 
you take it back at, more or less at the side and then between them you bring it out slightly down slightly lower down depending again how big you want the stitch now can you see that so the thumbs holding the thread down the needle has gone in at the side and it's come out between the two nicely spaced between the two then still keep your thumb there now make sure the thread is under your thumb but also under the needle and then you pull it look at that now if you wanted to make fly stitch you would now take that in there and that would be a complete stitch but we're not doing fly stitch we're going to do feather stitch so over here this side do it again here pull it then thumb this side now and then you take the thread over that side right across where it came out across here and in and then down whoops look at that involving itself and there you have your feather stitch just give it a practice and i think you'll love it i thoroughly enjoy doing this stitch so much so i'm just going to do another one so over here and down there we go right just to, to finish off we're just going to take the needle through the back and secure it so there you go wasn't too bad was it through the back i <laughs> sounded like my dentist then oh that wasn't too bad teresa was it <laughs> yes if i could speak i would say yes but i can't speak <laughs> so there you are feather stitch now if you are a beginner you're starting out sewing i advise you to make just a little booklet a little journal for yourself and it only need be that big different pages as as like a reference for you so in time you'll have feather stitch running stitch you'll have chain stitch twisted chain and you'll have yourself a nice little journal right that camera i think i'm knocking the camera sorry so that was the feather stitch which now i'm going to do on here and i'm going to use i do love this purple i love pinks and any related color i suppose really related to red now i said there so i'm going to do the feather stitch here i'm going to take that back i'm just going to make that smaller folks okay perhaps you might even see it better smaller now let's find a nice um this is awkward because i'm all at an angle here the camera's at an angle the computer's at an angle i'm at an angle and it's not very easy i'm moving i hope to move soon i'm getting married actually and um we're moving into a nice house well we should be hearing today if the offer's been accepted i hope it has the problem is i got cold feet a couple of weeks ago and we pulled out so um <sighs> we revisited the house when was it saturday just gone and i'd realized i've made an awful mistake so we resubmitted and got the offer but as yet what's today wednesday saturday sunday oh monday was a bank holiday oh it's yeah it's still early time isn't it but it's a lovely house but it has a summer house and my partner said oh that will make an ideal craft room for you and i thought oh yes it will do now i'm so busy talking i'm not showing you what i'm doing now i'm not going to take this all the way down 
so yeah which means I can leave all my craft stuff out and my camera and my microphone because I'm actually in my living room of my little teeny tiny flat which I do love but I mean there's only me here and as you can imagine this room has turned into my craft room my bedroom's my craft storeroom um, the kitchen well I can't even tell you about the kitchen it's got paint and PVA glue out there at the moment oh boxes bits of stuff that the chicken was in there's paper drying oh there must be about 50 tea bags drying on the the windowsill um and it's a disgrace it really is a disgrace but it's my disgrace anyway now that is all i'm doing along here and that's the feather stitch i hope you can see that now this feather stitch looks absolutely gorgeous with beads on it beads on the end but i'm not doing that today I'm going to continue my next step here is to place these now I've decided this is the front so when you're designing always remember when you're designing your, your journal covers and when you're sewing you're slow stitching your pieces do remember that the right side is usually normally the front so bear that in mind because why I say that I think it's always nice to have the the embellishments most of the embellishments on the front because it's the front that's going to be seen unless it was like the introductory um, journal that I showed you that the wrap around <laughs> where the back was so long it became the front all very confusing but I've kept this simple really for me so anyway oh i must stop saying anyway it gets on my nerves so every time i say anyway please shout and say stop it stop it now i said that one would go there and you're just going to hold that in place this one was going to now we said that was the, the center didn't we there Right, so this one, oh, I, marvellous, I wanted that curving round there. Ah, oh, however, you wouldn't be able to see, that would be a bit obscured, wouldn't it? I think, no, 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 did I have it that way? Oh, I like that anyway. And this one will go there, if indeed I put them up, use them all. Now I don't want to take this too close to the edge because next time we will be um, placing the binding on. So I'm just, is that the right way around? Oh no, that's back to front. See, these, this is such lovely fabric, it's hard to tell whether it's back to front or not. And that was it, back to front. Right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a running stitch all the way around these I might actually need a few more pins oops a few more pins because I will be picking it up and that will just hold it in place that's lovely Now, I'll enlarge that just again so you can see it. Right, there you go. So that is those three embellishments are now in place. And I'm going to start with a running stitch. I think I'll start up here. What I'll do is I'll make a start on the camera and then I'll turn it off and finish finish sewing these on off, off the camera and then I'll get back to you when I've done it. Now they shouldn't take too long so hopefully I will be back shortly. <laughs> 